Hi, this is Shandy and today I'm gonna talk about a special kind of history and that's my history. Um, I'm gonna talk about my martial arts background and my personal background and tell you how I evolved from choosing these martial arts that I'm involved in right now and how I started in the first place and what were the motives and the circumstances. So I grew up poor being raised by a single mother and we couldn't afford basically anything and even if we had to get something I either had to work for it or just not have it at all because you know we thought we did not deserve nice things such as having a passport traveling vacation etc so if I wasn't in school I would be working and if I wasn't working I would be you know studying at home or maybe see a friend or two but that's about it and summer breaks you know did not exist I was also working because I wanted to afford you know books and clothes for the winter because I was still growing and I would change clothes often and also the books would change every year etc etc however I was in a public school that was uh, I wouldn't call it public school per se because it was a school where if your son failed many times and repeated many classes um, and you have basically given up on your son you would put it in that school so when I was in sixth grade I was 11 everyone else was 14 and 15 years old and every class was the same thing everyone was three or four years older than me uh, I would see them just this year and the next because they failed again I wouldn't see them maybe they go and start working or whatever they did so I was very easily picked on because obviously they were disturbed children or teenagers and I was a very easy target to pick on so my life in school was basically just try to survive bullying and live day to day um, you know all the teenagers all the children when they wake up first thing in the morning they don't want to go to school because it's boring and they don't want to be there however it was a living hell for me because I would wake up and like oh my god I'm gonna go get beat up again I would walk in the school gates and I would find them just waiting for me and pointing their fingers like here he is here he comes let's just have fun again uh, so they would just gang up on me start to pick on me uh, you know like a s slap the back of my neck from behind uh, take off my hat or if it's the winter um, you know just everything and I, whenever they did this I would just freeze I can't do anything I was just so scared and my character was so broken I literally you know st the thought of standing up to myself just did not exist honestly and uh, also you know my mom would be working all day uh, there was no father figure in my life so again standing up to myself just simply did not exist and I would just go back home with these uh, thoughts like oh my god I should have done this uh, someday I will get them uh, just have these delusional scenarios in my head of me like uh, you know where the tables are turned and uh, it was really honestly quite sad um, the way I used to think and uh, you know they would gang up on me every single day and just pick on me and you know I still remember every slap every you know and here's the uh, crazy thing is that never once someone came and say like hey stop picking on this kid everyone would just uh, like circle around and start laughing it was literally it wasn't a school it was like a juvenile center or whatever uh, I don't know why like honestly till this day I, f I still feel like why hasn't someone you know came and stood up for me I remember just once uh, there was this big kid from high school because high school were separate he came and they, he said like he was very tall and he said like stop picking on this kid what's the matter with you and when they left because obviously they were cowards he started asking me like hey man are you okay uh, what's wrong and I, I remember like at that moment felt really good for me and I still cherish this moment till this day and I still know this person till this day and 
you know, that's how powerful it is to do nice things for someone and stand up for the weak. And also, growing up, I always wanted to do martial arts because my father, before he left, we did judo, me and my brother, and we had to stop, obviously, because we couldn't afford it anymore. And when I was growing up, uh, they would always t tell me that you either start young, like five or six years old, or you, you know, when you grow up, it's too late. Uh, kind of like those uh, myths, like... You cannot lift when you're a teenager, you'll stunt your growth, blah, blah, blah. So I grew up with this, oh my God, it's too late to learn martial arts, uh, you know. So then I, and I was really invested in studying and becoming, you know, because when you grow up poor, your parents and your family will really put pressure on you to study because they don't want you to do and face things like them. They want you to be successful and they, they want you to become the boss so you get, don't get picked on like they did. So my main priority in life was just being good in my studies because that will translate in good college education and that will translate in a good job and that will translate in a happy life. And now I know that is not the case and that simply is not true. But that's another topic. So I the only thing I did was mainly just hang out with maybe two of my friends or I would learn guitar at home. I was, I'm was i a self-taught guitarist. Um, I looked on tabs online, uh, tutorials, even books before YouTube, before all of it. And after that, you know, I went to architecture school and I was still basically a spineless wimp uh, in my job uh, with women, uh, if I wanted, like, to, to go and force into a course or, you know, talk to a professor, I would never do it again. I was, because my character was just broken from years and years and years of bullying and abuse. This is the simple truth. Uh, so, I remember I did my first internship. Oh no, I'm sorry, before that, I was working as a bartender and going to architecture school at the same time. So when my friends were on the weekends, you know, going out, hanging out and having fun, I was the one pouring them their drinks and on Monday I would see them in class. So I built up a, a quite a nice uh, reputation in school between, you know, some of the people, they know me as their bartender. So that's a cool thing that happened. Um, so when I was around 21, uh, my brother was on vacation. He he lived in, he lives in Paris, so he was on vacation, and he came back, uh, and he said, uh, "Hey, uh, listen, man, I want to start uh, karate." And I said, "Aren't we old?" And he said, "Like what?" And I said, "Yeah, like shouldn't you start young? Because you know, when you're old, like you're not gonna be as efficient, and you know, if you're physically not." like flexible and he says like what no he says like you can always work on your flexibility you can always start fresh people do martial arts till they die he started showing me these videos of these um masters and people starting yoga very late and becoming very flexible etc he says like why are you limiting yourself yes we can afford it but now like things are far better let's start doing this and so i had to pick a martial art and obviously I love judo, but just the thought of sparring and competing, just I freeze because like, like I said, the idea of sticking up to myself and let alone fighting just scared me from years and years of getting picked on. And, you know, I'm not going to go into details, but a lot of terrible things happened in the school. Um, so I was looking and... I, I found Aikido, you know, it's peaceful, you, you defend against knives and punches and uh, watching Steven Seagal. Uh, now, I, now I know far better, but again, when I was looking at this, I didn't know. The idea of a martial art that's barely effective did not occur to me, because why would such a thing exist? Because you can easily test it in a ring or whatever. I didn't, I didn't think about it couldn't, you know, work. The thought just did not occur to me because it made no sense. Um, so I started Aikido around the age of 21 and uh, I had a professor or a sensei. Um, he was like 6'2", 
240 pounds. Uh, he has a kickboxing background. He's a bodybuilder. Uh, like very scary man. And he started to teach me and he would talk to us about, you know, getting bullied. Um, I used to live in a third world country and, you know, it's not uncommon for people to get assaulted on the streets, etc. So he knew about these things. So his training methodology was a bit different. It was, you know, uh, one day we do jabs and crosses and we would just learn how to duck and dodge them and try to not do a technique, an Aikido technique, but just dodge and move and, you know, do the Tai Sabaki or the foot placement of Aikido, but try to dodge stuff like uh, punches and jabs and cross and hooks, etc. So I didn't think it was ineffective because obviously he made, he turned it into a, like a self defense system. But you know, on days we do like a very traditional Aikido and on other days we do these you know, uh, knife stabs and jabs and crosses and randori where we, we would have four people just attacking one person. So I never thought it doesn't work because he, the way he was training us, it really worked. Um, it was kind of like a hybrid between Krav Maga and Aikido, if you want. And he would go and also teach the special forces. I went with him many times and saw him how he teach the special forces. So it wasn't like the Aikikai or the Aikido you see in uh, uh, in the West or the first world countries or in Europe or whatever. So I never thought of of it as an art that doesn't work or I never even thought to say like, uh, I think I want a new challenge or I'll look for something else. So I never doubted it. I never questioned it because, hey, as far as I know, it works. And even my brother, when he would come for, for vacations, we would spar, he would enter with his karate legs and fists, uh, mawashi geri, tsuki, ura, uh, ura tsuki, whatever. It is like the back fist stuff. And I would block them. I would move. I would try to even apply a technique. And so obviously that stuff worked. So fast forward to 2016, late 2016. And I, I myself moved to France to get a master's degree in architecture. And I enrolled in the club. I I even got a letter to go and train with Christian Tissier himself because the president of the federation in my home country sent him a letter. I'm sending this kid. Hey, watch out for him. And he is a brown belt or first Q. Let's prepare him for his black belt. So I started training with Christian Tissier and it was the best thing that could ever happen to me. I was training with the best. I'm doing a master's degree in architecture. Uh, so everything was going for me. But uh, I was still doubtful. Like, can I fight? I've never sparred. Uh, I would always think of these things that happened to me in school. All these punches, all these slaps, all these fists. Can I block them now? I was always in a state of doubt. And... Uh, I was just, when I think about it, I would just get anxious. Uh, and then when I was introduced to the real Aikikai style of Aikido, then it hit me like that stuff will not work. It was just too soft, too mellow. It was not going to work. But I could not leave. First of all, I came with a recommendation. And two, I need to get my black belt. I, I'm the kind of person that doesn't start something without finishing it and I said you know just get your black belt uh, and then think from there because you really don't know and I still had that idea that Rokas Leo from Martial Arts Journey discussed uh, you know they will teach you things when you are th second done and third done and you become a lethal uh, human uh, you know you are too deadly for MMA and I, I used to believe all of that and when I got my first black belt uh, the doubt never went away and with the style of Aikikai I said like there's no way you're gonna fight someone with this style there's no way uh, and then I started watching more of uh, Ro Casleo martial arts journey and I saw him uh, you know posting his MMA fight and uh, 
you know, getting his ass kicked and transitioning to BJJ and starting MMA training. So all that stuff made me think that, you know, I should try something new at least. And I, then I watched his uh, uh, interview with Roy Dean. It's a brilliant interview. Roy Dean is actually a black belt in Judo, Japanese Jiu Jitsu, Aikido, uh, and third dan BJJ. So if there's anyone who knows what he's talking about, it's Roy Dean. So he talked about, you know, how Aikido can give you this grappling instinct. You can feel if a move is going to work or not. Uh, move your hips well, place your placement, footwork. And I do agree, it gave me like a really good uh, grappling instinct. I learned far better now, but it doesn't work. Uh, so I got my black belt around the time I got my master's degree in architecture. So I said, let's try something new. This is a new chapter in my life. Uh, now I got the college degree, I got the black belt. And before that, I think I thought that if I get my black belt and my master's degree that this is it, life is good. I'll get over my bullying. I'll get over the years of being spineless, etc. But that, this couldn't be farther from the truth. Um, so, I thought just try one class, just one class, and then I went to BJJ class at the same club actually, and I got choked like a million times, and even the warm up really wore me out. I was like, man, I'm so weak. And then I, but I thought to myself like, this is so much fun. I want to do this forever. And I also took judo, but. When I started working full time as an architect, um, I was also continuing my studies to become like a uh, architectural entrepreneur, which I got my degree very recently. Uh, so I was going to night school, night classes, and full time job. So I had to pick one, either judo or BJJ. And for self self defense reasons, I went with judo because stand up grappling is very important. And there is some newaza in judo. Uh, luckily, there was far more newaza than I expected, and it's the best decision I ever took. Yes, it was very hard to take off your black belt that you recently earned and then wear a new, you know, white belt that still had the folding marks on it. Uh, it's not easy. It's not easy to walk in once again a beginner after four years of you know hardcore training and becoming a black belt, training with the best, etc. I had to all let it go, um, kind of like Rokas, but Rokas did it on a far better level. Rokas actually sacrificed his dojo, his livelihood, put his marriage on the line, everything in order to search for the truth and becoming a better person and a better warrior. And I truly, and Rokas, if you are listening to this, I truly thank you and I truly admire you for everything that you have done and documenting everything. Um, so now I am, I have far more time on my hand. I recently picked up BJJ again, uh, and still continuing judo. And here's the thing when it comes to bullying. Uh, George St. Pierre said you never get over it, you can only work to, you know, minimize the memory or prevent it from happening, something like that. And from the countless sparring that I did in these last, you know, year and a half, uh, whether on the ground or standing up, now when I look back at what happened in my school, I, I don't feel like anxious or have these panic attacks. I, uh, first, it's kind of like a neutral thing. But, uh, you know, I think of it, you know, if I meet them again, it would be a very rather interesting encounter because, you know, now I have way too many strategies. Uh, my repertoire of technique is very rich. Uh, I mean, a year and a half, the stuff I learned was just simply amazing. Yes, Aikido played a role because Aikido is so detailed in its technique. So any other technique you learn becomes like very easy. So I feel like I've been training for like three years of judo and jujitsu and grappling and that stuff. So 
Aikido truly gives you like a trampoline when it comes to, you know, shooting up in learning capabilities. And, you know, and now I feel like I truly got over it. You need to, and I don't regret doing Aikido because, you know, I had to go through that phase. I had to go through, you know, at least wearing a gi and going to a dojo. But, you know, it wasn't sustainable and I was just too scared of sparring or competing. And now I've sparred countless times. I've competed once in a tournament. Uh, it wasn't like a, uh, this victory that I thought it would be. I got the gold medal, but pff, who cares? Um, you know, that's why I think, you know, competitions are overrated unless, you know, it's your livelihood and whatever. But, you know, know that it is limited. I feel like I've done martial arts in the right way. Uh, you know, developing myself, my character, my confidence. Uh, I even when I was started Aikido, I even took up painting. Now I'm a painter as well. Uh, I even authored a book about my childhood and my past life. Uh, so, you know, martial art truly opened my horizon and truly opened my limitations. And, you know, it's not just, you know, competing and winning that gold medal. The, th the stuff I accomplished because of martial arts are the best things ever. If, say, I only did architecture and finish, I would still be that w w wimpy, spineless kid. I used to be just with an architecture degree. That's it. Martial arts truly saved my life in more ways than I can imagine from a psychological and physical standpoint. Um, I hope this story or history of mine, uh, you know, gave you some insight. Uh, really, thank you for listening. Uh, you know, if you asked me a few years back to do this kind of video, I would never because I would be too embarrassed or too shy. But, uh, you know, now it's something that I'm really proud of. Uh, this was Shady and thank you for listening.